Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a good, good clap offering. How many want to be under an open heaven? I do. Praise the Lord. You can have your seats. I was going to show this video uh, to go along with the message that I'm preaching this morning. The title of the message is, uh, we're going to talk about the rapture. Uh, you know, the theme of this year for Victory Outreach is, He is coming. Well, what does that mean, He's coming? Like, like uh, There's a lot of different uh, ideas that people have about that, Him coming. And uh, I want to share with you this morning what uh, the Bible teaches about that. Sometimes people get confused with the second coming, the rapture, and, and the end of the world. They're not the same. They're not the same. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to say con congratulations. I don't know if they're watching or not, but Cody and Leanna had a baby girl this morning at 6.56 a.m., 5 pounds, 12 ounces, and her name is Ariella. Ariella. Ariella, that's her name. And so, uh, come on, get a little good clap off for that. We're going to grow this church one way or another. So get to work. Yeah, that's real. Not really. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you this morning. We love you. We pray, God, that you would just use your word, God, for your honor and your glory. Prepare your people. Father, this morning, Pastor David preached about uh, uh, the ten virgins, and he mentioned them in his message, God. And Father, we want to be ready. We don't want to be like the foolish, uh, the five foolish ones who were not ready. I pray, God, that this message would prompt us, would uh, it would prick our minds and our hearts, God, that, that we would begin to really think about you coming back. That we really begin to think about who we are really, not playing it off, just putting ourselves out there, God, so you could deal with our hearts. We love you and adore you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about the rapture. Uh, Sometimes, I said it a little while ago, but let me say it again. Those of you watching online, good to have you here. Praise the Lord. Sometimes people mistake the rapture as the end of the world, but it's not. When the rapture comes, God's people are going to be taken up, taken up, but it's not going to be the end of the world. But I believe with all my heart, we're being set up for it right now, today. How many believe that? Uh, because the Bible says after the rapture, there's going to be so much turmoil like never seen before. We're already headed that way, so it's not going to be that big of a surprise for a lot of people. They're going to be, no, that's not nothing. It's just the way the world is, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse as we're already gone. So sometimes people mistake the rapture as the end of the world, but it's not. But for us as Christians, it is the end of our stay here on earth. There's three prophetic events that get confused as one. They are the rapture the second coming of Christ, and the end of the world. They are not the same. They're not the same. The world we know today will end. It'll be destroyed by fire. That's the end of the world. All right? But now before I begin, I want to remind you that what it's, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. And this is what it says. It says, no one knows the day or the hour when the events of the end times are going to happen. It doesn't, but it does. It doesn't say the day or the hour, but God is gracious enough to give us the season. He tells us, I'm going to give you signs. I'm not going to tell you the exact day, but I am going to give you signs. And when you study the Bible, the signs are here. Every prophetic thing that needed to take place or needs to take place has taken place. The last thing to take place is the rapture. Some, this is why it's important that we don't understand the second coming because a lot of times we think about the second coming. That's when the Antichrist comes on the scene. The rapture, we're gone. We're actually not going to see any of that. So if you're waiting for the Antichrist, I hope you don't see him. <laughs> I don't want to see him. <laughs> you don't want to see him. Turn around, talk about it. You don't want to see him. So, first of all, let's, I wanted to make that clear. There's the rapture, there's the second coming, and then there's the end of the world. Those are all in the Bible. The Bible teaches us about those days. In Matthew 24, if you turn your Bibles with me there, 
I'm going to start in verse uh, 1. You ready? Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to his buildings. Do you see these things, he asked? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign? Somebody say sign. And what will be the signs of your coming and, the, uh, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you real quickly. One of the things that is going to happen, uh, there's going to come a time when it's all said and done that people are going to, the Bible says that we're, there's going to be a time we're going to be looking into a hole and the devil's going to be in that hole. And what we're going to say is this, is that him? That's him? That's him. And then it says this, he's the one that deceived the nations, not the murderer, not the liar, not the adulterer, not the immoral person, but the deceiver. I think the greatest weapon against the world and the church, especially the church, is deception. And you know what the biggest lie is? You got all the time in the world. You ain't got nothing to worry about. You can live the way you want to live. Deceived. So watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation. Now, I always, when I get to this part, uh, race, nation will rise against nation. It's, it's, it's not talking about Russia against America, although all that stuff's probably going to happen. It's, it's a certain group of people against themselves. They can't get along. Sound familiar? Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pangs. Birth pains. At that time, many, listen, listen, guys. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. I have never in all the years that I have been saved seen a group of Christian people so compromising, so uncommitted. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. So compromising and so uncommitted, it blows my mind. I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know if I want to pray or slap them. Like, come on. How, don't you read your Bible? Don't you read your Bible? This is the end. And you still want to live like that? He said, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the, in listen, oh, this is the part right here. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Uh, I wrote, I got, I put some little special notes right here. If the heart grows cold, everything will be coldly done. Everything will be done cold. We, when, when love declines, what the preaching is going to be cold. The singing is going to be cold. The, the, the giving is going to be cold. Our commitments are going to be cold. And my brothers and sisters, we are there today. I've never seen the church as cold as it is today. Such a lack of commitment. So much compromise. I mean, when I see, I'm not trying to judge nobody, it's just what I see. If it ain't you, praise the Lord. If it is, praise the Lord, get right, right? Verse 14, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. For then there will be great distress, unequal, verse 21, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. If those days, the Bible says in verse 22, if those days had not been cut short, no one would make it. I wouldn't make it. If God didn't shorten those days, I wouldn't make it. It's going to get to a place to where the very elect won't make it. And I know the Bible teaches us that even during that time of tribulation, people are going to be able to give their lives to the Lord. But if you can't do it now, you're probably not going to do it then. Because if I could barely make it, 
man, some people are in trouble. Are you guys still with me? At that time, verse 23, if anyone says to you, look, here's a Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. There's that word again. If possible, even the elect. So, see, I have told you ahead of time. Those are the signs, guys. Immediately, verse 29, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars, listen, the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Verse 32. Now, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. Therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know on what day our Lord will come. But understand this. See, God just keeps on trying to help us. Let me tell you something else to help you out. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The next prophetic event is the rapture, guys. We're just waiting for that. We're just waiting for the rapture now. Well, but hopefully we're not just waiting for it. Hopefully we're doing something. Hopefully we're trying to tell people, get them out of their madness, get them out of their drug addictions or whatever they're in, and lead them to the Lord. Now, the next prophetic event is the rapture. The word rapture is not found in our, uh, in our English Bibles but neither is the Bible. If you look all through the Bible, you'll not find the word Bible in there. Right? But it's true. There is a, there's going to be a rapture. The word comes from a Latin word used to translate the Greek word harpizo. This is the Greek word we, found, we find in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 that says this. After that, we who are still alive, talking about the rapture, and are left behind will be caught up. That word caught up is our piso, and it means to seize, to be caught up, right? Or another Latin word is rap, raptusa, something like that. Together with them in the clouds, the Bible says, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever, forever. The rapture is what happens to Christians who are alive when Jesus returns for his church. If you're a Christian and the rapture happens today, we are out. We are shaking this spot. We're not here no more. We're, we're going to be gone in the twinkling of an eye. And I've, been, and I've been, a long time ago, I used to tell people, you know what's going to happen? They're going to say that aliens came and took everybody. And it's amazing because I would say maybe like a year ago or maybe less, they started saying aliens are real. Spaceships are real. They, you guys know that, right? You guys seen that? Now they're saying, so when, this, so when this does happen, you know what they're gonna say? The aliens took us. <laughs> That's my theory. Like I mentioned it, it is different. The rapture is different than the actual second coming to Christ. The second coming to Christ, we're gonna come with him. Those of us that have been raptured, we're gonna come with him to make war with the devil and all of his things, whatever they are, right? Because not everyone, because uh, not everyone will see him when the rapture happens. This is going to be the thing. When we get raptured up, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to hear the mighty blast. We're going to hear the trumpet blowing. Nobody else is. They might hear the trumpet blowing, but they're not going to see his face. Only we're going to see his face. And we're going to be taken up. But then we're going to come back. That's the second coming. Stay with me. Only believers will see him as they are caught up with him in the air in the twinkling of an eye. Every time I read that, I try to twinkle my eye. Refresh. See how fast that is. 
The second coming is when Jesus and us come back to the earth to do war with the enemy. The world will be destroyed by fire. That's the end of the world. And that will be the end of the world that we know today. And after that, the Bible teaches us there will be a new earth and a new heaven. Now, there's two portions of Scripture that give some description of this event. You find them in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. Are you getting scared yet? Okay, good. Brothers... We do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. That's what they used to say about people that died, they fell asleep. Or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left to the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. I get excited when I think about the rapture. I get excited when I think that Jesus is coming back and, and I'm going to be leaving this earth. I, would, there, if I, I don't like the earth no more. <laughs> I don't like what's going on anymore. I hate that Russia could just go to Ukraine and bomb little kids and kill women and children and kill people and, and bomb hospitals and I can't do nothing about it. That bothers me. I want to do something, but I can't. Don't you want to do something about it? Doesn't it bother you that another country can just attack another country and bombard them and kill their kids and rape their women and torture them, and we can't do anything about it? Does that bother you? It bothers me. I want to go over there. Right? The other scripture is found in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 54. It says this, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, verse 51, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in, the, in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised unperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable, listen, for the perishable must put, uh, for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortal. When the perishable has been clothed with, Im with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortal immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. You guys with me? Now, what happens in the rapture? We talked about it a little bit, but the Bible teaches us that believers who have died uh, return with Christ and receive glorified bodies. Amen? Now, this got a little bit kind of confusing when I was reading it, but we, we figured it out, or God showed me. 1 Thessalonians 4.14 says, We believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Since the time, listen, since the time of Christ's resurrection, believers who have died have gone immediately to be with the Lord. Paul confirms this for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 8. Therefore, verses 6 and 8 says this, Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So those who die in Christ are with the Lord. Listen, this is the part right here. So those who die in Christ are with the Lord consciously and spiritually, but not yet have their glorified bodies. Because the Bible says they're going to come out and to be present with the, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Stay with me, you'll get it right now. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, where Paul says that the dead will be raised imperishable. How are the dead being raised if they're with the Lord and returning with them? That was the part that got me like, wait a minute, how does that work? I thought we were going to be, right, right? Their bodies are being raised and transformed, and those who have died will receive their glorified bodies at that time. So that it is one thing that happens at the rapture. This is one thing that happens at the rapture. Another thing that happens at the rapture is this. Am I going too fast? All right. Believers who are alive rise to Christ and are instantly 
and instantly receive their glorified body. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, that after those who have died receive their glorified bodies, that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. We will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come to true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. We're going to be like Enoch if we're still alive. We're going to be here and then we're going to be gone. Just like that. Just like that. Because the rapture is going to come. You guys are going to go to my house and I ain't going to be there. Well, none of you guys. Some people might. Right? I'm not going to be there. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you're here when he comes back for the church, you will not die. But you'll be transformed in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, and your body will be changed from the aging, decaying, bone-aching, headaches, can't breathe right. <laughs> you're going to have a perfect body that does not decay, that does not suffer, they will not get cancer. They will not get diabetes. They will not get high pressure, high blood pressure. You'll be free from blemishes. Don't got to worry about no makeup. Getting your eyebrows did. <laughs> You'll never break another bone. What will that look like from those who are, what, what, what will it look like for those who are not believers, though? Those who are left behind. Well, I don't know exactly. I'm not going to be here. I don't want to be here. But according to what the Bible says, it's going to be so bad that it's going to be the worst that this world has ever seen. We're almost there now. I've never seen the world like this, like this. I've never seen it like this. I've never seen the turmoil that I'm seeing today. I've never seen the division that I'm seeing today. I've never seen the evil wickedness that I'm seeing today. I've never seen it before like this. I've heard about it, read about it, watched movies about it, but it's really happened. I would never in my lifetime ever think that I would see one country going to another country and destroy it like that. Now, it's happened before, but I thought we were past that. I thought that that could never happen again, didn't you? When you see all that stuff happening in Ukraine, that's stuff you see on the movies. You don't see that in real life. When you see people changing from men to women, that's in the movies. You don't see it. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would see that. But it's happening, guys. And you know what's happening, too? We're becoming numb to it. We're becoming numb to it. It's a setup. It's a setup. We're, they're trying to set me up. <laughs> they're trying to set you up. Make you numb to the wickedness. Ah, that's them. That's the way they are. Some people are like that. Uh, I don't know. We weren't like that when I was growing up. When I was growing up, it, we weren't like that. It was a whole different situation. Our kids are so disrespectful. For real. Don't get mad at me, guys, but they are so disrespectful. If I would have disrespected my mom the way some of you guys talk to your mom, every bone in my body would have been broken. My uncles would have got me. Their uncles would have got me. The neighbor would have got me. Everybody would have got me. My big uncle, they would have beat me down. They would have beat me down. I would, I would, I would be probably, I would not be in a good place right now. When we walked into a house, we had to tell every adult in that house, hi, how you doing? And if it was an uncle, you better not call him by their first name. Hi, Aunt Ted, Uncle Ted. Hi, Aunt Mary. Hi, Aunt Marina. Hi, Uncle Steve. I still call my uncle Uncle Steve. <laughs> I still do it. Because I was brought up that way. But today, 
The kids today are so disrespectful. They bump into you, don't even say, excuse me. They just walk by and boom. In my day, if I'd have done that, I would have got bam. Did you forget to say something, boy? Or do you need another one? Am I telling the truth? <laughs> oh, my goodness. But in the book of Timothy, it says this. In the last days, our youngsters are going to be so disrespectful. My friends, we are in the last days. Don't hate them. Don't beat them down. I'm not saying beat them down. But understand what's happening. Pray harder for them. Lay hands on them. Don't get them in a room and you see, that's what's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, pray for them because they're not going to change. It is the spirit of the world. It is the spirit of the world. You acted just like the spirit in your world. They're going to be the same way. And the only thing that's going to change them is us getting on our knees, crying out for them. If you believe that, come on, give a little good clap off because it's so true. So true. So don't, I'm not saying beat your kids down. But I would have got beat down, though. I did get beat down. Man, I can't, I can't forget it. I got beat down with two by fours. You think I'm playing uh, the butt of shotguns or rifles? Extension cords? Man, I got, I got jumped on the ground, beat up like I was a... Like, I was terrible. I was terrible, guys. But I learned my lesson. They said, don't do that. I never did it again. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what it's going to be like after the rapture, but it's going to be pretty, pretty bad, guys. People, we're going to be gone in a flash, and the world is going to go nuts. I think the world is nuts now. Can you imagine when it, after that how it's going to be? It's going to be terrible. All I know is that we do not want to be one of the people left behind. Turn around and tell somebody, I don't want to be left behind. Because the Bible teaches us that the world is in for hardship and tribulation like it has never seen before. Now, we know there are different places in the world that have already surpassed us, surpassed us in wickedness and sexual immorality. We're catching up. And we're getting there. Are you guys still with me? I don't want to be, I don't want to be here. I want to go. When is the rapture going to happen? When will it happen? Well, when Christianity... Within Christianity, there are some differing views regarding the timing of the rapture. There's basically three main views for those who hold, uh, for those that believe that the rapture is going to happen. First of all, there's pre-tribulation, which is what I believe. Okay? That means that the rapture happens before the time of the tribulation. Others believe in mid-tribulation. They believe that during the, that time period, in the middle of that, that's when the rapture is going to happen. And there's other people that believe after. Uh, that they believe that the, that the rapture is going to happen after all that madness. That the rapture will happen at the end of the tribulation period and, at the, and that the rapture and the second coming are, are the same thing. And I, they're not. There are Christians that hold different views just like once they've always seen, right? They, they, there's, there's scriptures that you can find that will tell you once they've always saved. And there's also scriptures that you can find that will tell you not once saved, always saved. Amen? There are scriptures that you can find that will tell you pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip. We believe or we teach pre-trip. We believe that before the tribulation, we're going to get out of here. There are, uh, that's why thus you have the word saved. You believe in God, I'm saved. Saved from what? That. The tribulation. The wrath to come. All the madness. God is going to pull me out of that. There's not, I, I'm not going to see that. I, I don't get to meet, I don't get to see the Antichrist and CNN. You might. Not really. I hope not. I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture position. I think the pre-tribulation rapture position best explains the prophecies that we read about. Now, if you agree with me, realize, I wrote right here, realize that I still recognize you as a brother. You know, if you don't, I'm sorry, if you disagree with me, it doesn't really matter. It's just like the same thing with one save, always save. If you believe one save, always save, praise the Lord. 
If you don't, praise the Lord. You're still saved, right? If you believe, preach it, whatever, praise the Lord. I believe, and we, and we teach in Victory Outreach International, the pre-trib. A pre-tribulation best explains our rescue from God's wrath. You guys stay with me? The tribulation period that is to come is characterized as a time of God's wrath being poured out in judgment on this world and those who fail to receive Christ. Speaking of the time of tribulation, Jesus says this in Luke 21, 23. He says, how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and for nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. And in Revelation 6.17, it says, For the great day of the wrath has come. Who can stand? But, somebody say but. But God tells us through the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Wait for the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. You guys catch that? Jesus is coming to rescue us from the coming wrath. In Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, he says that God did not appoint us, believers, to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved. When we say, I'm saved, you know, like, like before I used to hear people say, I'm saved, I said, you're saved from what? 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 What happened? You were drowning. You were gonna, this was going to happen to you. I don't get it. What do you mean you're saved? Now I know what I'm saved from. I'm saved from the wrath to come. How many saved people we got in the house? Are you saved? That's what we're saved from. We who believe on and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior will be rescued from the wrath of God that will be poured out during that period of, tribula of tribulation. You know, I've heard people say, oh, they're crazy, and then I watch them and I say, you ain't that crazy. I've heard people say that they could fight really, really super good and all that, and I watch them, and you can't really fight that good. Right? But if God is going to bring a wrath like he's never brought before, you better watch out. Because we've seen what has happened before. This whole world got destroyed by water just like that. People were messing around. He said, I'm done with y'all. It's all over. Get right. They didn't want to get right. Gave them 100 years. They still didn't want to get it right. So what did he do? He drowned everybody. Except for a few. Right? He drowned them all. He said he'll never do that again. But the Bible teaches us there's going to be fire. When you think about it, and you look at history, and you know there's, I think it's like 27% um, of scientists, I think, believe it's 27% of scientists, all they do is figure out how to make new weapons of war. Of all the scientists that we have in the world, 27% of them, all they do is try to figure out how to make new weapons of war. Most people believe that COVID is a weapon of war. See what COVID did? You think they got better ones than that? They do. They do got better ones than that. So we want to make sure that we're ready for this. In regards to the second coming of Christ when he returns and actually stands upon the earth and will conquer Satan and begin a millennial kingdom, that's the second coming, there are plenty of prophecies that need to occur before that time, namely the rapture and the Antichrist. There will be no second coming until the rapture. Then after that, there's the second coming, and we're coming with them. Are you guys catching that? So quit looking for the Antichrist. Quit looking for that, because you're not going to see that if you're going to heaven. What we need to do is we need to exhaust ourselves worshiping God, praising God, living for God, going out there and getting people saved the best that we can, living the uh, right, the best kind of life that we can live. Forget about the Antichrist. Who cares if it's Trump, the Pope, whoever it is, so what? I don't care. What I care about is that day when I stand before the Lord and he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Are you guys with me? Quit waiting. You know, because some people, they're waiting just for that right time. How much time do I got left? Okay, we're getting close now. So, you know, no. The Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. You're not going to know. How many know when the thief in the night comes? He comes when you're not home, when you don't know what's going on. Catches you off guard. 
Just like that, boom. Remember one time my wife and I came home and somebody was jumping out our window. They never came back. Because I went outside with my gun. I'm, I need help, guys. So, <laughs> If his return for the church at the rapture or at any other time than before the tribulation, we would not have to worry about being found not doing what he has called us to do. Because we would be expecting him at a certain time already. Okay, we know there's the Antichrist. This is this and that and da 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 da. And and I thank God. And God has done it that way. I believe with all my heart. God showed me this like about three or four or five years ago, six, seven, eight, something like that. And and uh, God showed me that He's not telling us today was probably one of the most gracious things He could do for us. Because you know how we are, right? If God said. I am coming back January the 19th, 2023. You know what we would do? We would wait till January the 17th or the 18th before we came to the altar. Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I believe in you. I know you're real. All that would be not real at all. All that would be phony. And he'd lose you for sure. So he said, I'm not going to tell you when. Because then you'll fake it. Because then you'll be a hypocrite. And I love you too much to do that, so I'm not going to tell you just to make sure you stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Our theme in Victory Outreach International this year is He is Coming. Whoa, that's heavy. That's, I've been in Victory Outreach for 40 years. That is heavy because most of our themes are geared towards building the church. We're running out of time. You know, I mean, uh, uh, so I forget a lot of things like that. I don't know. What, oh, the time is now to get ready. Let building and battling, uh, taking the nations and, and all that. We've gotten to the point now where it's he is coming. <laughs> oh, oh, he's coming. So if this wasn't true, we would not have to worry about being found not doing what he has called us to do because we would be expecting him at a certain time. But instead, he tells us in Matthew 25, verse 10, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour when Jesus will return because it could be at any moment. It could be right now. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. It could be while you're watching whatever you watch on TV. It could be when you're watching whatever you watch on the internet or when you're strolling TikTok. Or when you're at work. I get too crazy. <laughs> when you're at work flirting in the break room. Oh, Jesus, help us. I used to work, guys, like a regular job. It gets crazy at work. Come on, does it get crazy at work? Oh, my goodness. But instead, he tells us, keep watch, Matthew 25, 10, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour when Jesus will return because it could be at any moment. So pre-tribulation and after best explains the expectations of Christ's return. A pre-tribulation rapture also best explains our rescue from God's wrath. Are you guys with me? Let me ask the musicians to make their way to the front. Wow, that was really cool. <laughs> so pre-tribulation rapture best explains the expectations of Christ's imminent return. A pre-tribulation also best explains our rescue from God's wrath. So, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you need to give your life to Jesus today. If you're here today and you're living a life of fornication, you're doing those things, you're drinking, you're taking drugs, you're cheating. You're messing around at your job. You're stealing from your job. 
And, you, and you're sitting here right now, and you know you're just not right with God. You know that. I don't, there's, I don't have to say a whole lot about all the different sins. If you're in sin, you know it right now because God's speaking to you, right? So if that's you today, get it right. Get it right because the rapture might happen tonight. Might happen tomorrow. Might happen when we walk out those doors. Don't you want to be ready? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to get you saved. I, I, we can tell now if you're living like that that you're not scared. I get it. You're not scared. You have no fear of God in your life, but you better get it. You better get the fear of the Lord in your life. Because if you're living like that and still coming to church, you have no fear of God. And you need to get ready. Get ready because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming quickly. That word quickly doesn't mean real fast. It just means suddenly. That's what it means. It doesn't mean, you know, that it's going to happen in the near future. That doesn't, not what that word quickly means. When you look it up, that word quickly means suddenly. It's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye, like a flash. This is why when you see videos of uh, the rapture, then what happens is you see that taking place. Uh, you guys got that video ready? Or did we discard it? I'm going to show you a video real quick. Is that all right? I want you to see it. Because this is what's going to happen. Sorry, guys. Praise the Lord. Just move it here. Move it to the side here. The Bible is very clear. As the rapture hits, man, we get sucked up off this earth. We meet the Lord in the clouds, and all this baloney fades away. Right after the rapture, shortly thereafter, I don't know the exact date of that, but man, shortly after that, bang, God's wrath is going to be poured out on this planet for seven years nonstop. You don't want to be here. So if you're not saved, you need to get saved right now. This is not a game. You might look something up here. Oh.
So when I was watching this, this seems incredible. Like, come on. It's really, right? You know what used to seem incredible to me? That we would become a nation with only three states not doing surgeries to turn 13-year-old boys to 13-year-old girls. There's only three states in the United States that don't do that surgery. Every other state in the United States will get your little boy and turn him into a girl if he wants to be a girl. They'll put him in a surgery, they'll cut whatever they need to cut, do whatever they need to do to make that boy a little girl. Only three states in the United States don't do it yet, but they're on their way. We are living in the last days. I would have never thought in my wildest dream that I would see that, that I would see that happen. It's like, are you, and we're letting it happen? And it's legal? And they have a legal right to do that? They have a legal right to get a 15-year-old boy and turn him into a girl. And you can't stop it. You have no say so. Would you have ever thought that even 10, 15 years ago? No way. There is no way our government will allow that. Well, they did. It's allowed. We're living in the last days, guys. We need to be ready. Not only do we need to be ready, but we need to go out there and test the fire. We need to go out there. We need to knock on our neighbor's door. We need to, when we go to shopping, we need to start telling people that Jesus loves them and that Jesus has a plan for them life and that Jesus can save them and that Jesus can heal them and that they want to be ready because Jesus is coming back. Let me tell you something. There isn't a joint in the world, and I'm talking about marijuana, that you're going to want to smoke when this is happening. It's not going to do anything for you. There isn't an alcohol that you're going to reach for that's going to help you. Are you guys catching that? There's not. There isn't a drug that's going to calm you when that's happening. When it's happening, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. And whatever you get will probably be laced with poison anyway. Because that's how wicked it's going to be. I want to make it. How many want to make it? Come on, let's all stand. Listen, I want to make a... I want to make an altar call for salvation. If you don't know Jesus, maybe you're not sure about where you stand. You know, maybe you've been messing around a little bit, whatever, you've been dibbling, dabbling, got your own little pet sins going on. Maybe you're not living right with the Lord. Maybe you're you're living with somebody you're not married to. You know, maybe you're involved in... Uh, extramarital affairs or whatever the case might be today is the day to get it right today is the day to get it right he is coming so what we're going to do right now we're going to sing a song and as we sing this song i want to open up the altar you know,